Ah, Evelyn. I've heard the news already. I assume this means you'll be taking over all the Eliza work? Yes, that's the plan. It's time for me to return to my project and see it through. Makes sense. You might be the only person in the world who has a chance of really understanding how it works. I hope you'll look favorably on how I handled things. I don't know why, but I ended up sort of... Well, I, I just tried to do my best. I don't know if you'll keep me on the team or if you'll ask that I be reassigned. It's too early to talk about things like that. I know I have no right to ask this, since you're the inventor and maybe my future boss, or maybe we won't work together at all, but please be kind. There are real people's memories inside Eliza. I hope we do what we can to honor those memories. We'll do what we can. Erland, you need to stop being so sentimental. How are you going to last at a company like Skanda with an outlook like that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know where this weird sense of ethics I have comes from. I'll have to make some choices at some point. That's right. You will. We all do. Erland, come talk to me anytime. I will. Yeah, I will. Thank you, Evelyn. All right then, over the coming days, I'll be meeting with each one of you to learn more about your areas of responsibility. Then we'll take a look at our current tasks and priorities and reevaluate how they align with Eliza's new top level design goals. We'll generate a three year roadmap document by the end of the week and then a more granular development plan for the next six months or so by the week after. Those are ambitious goals, but I'm sure we can pull it off. Before we wrap up, I want to add one more important note, so please pay attention. Everything we do here is in service of developing Eliza's ability to understand human beings and human behavior. That means I won't approve development activities that aren't directly related to that goal. No research projects that may or may not pay off 10 years down the line. We need to be smart, shrewd, and fast. I don't say that because I'm worried about the competition. I say it because I'm worried about humanity. Mental health is a growing problem across the world, but right now, very little is being done to address it. Governments don't want to allocate money to it. Even the big nonprofits aren't paying enough attention to this crisis. So that's where we step in. going to look at this problem head on and address it ourselves. And because we're a company, we're going to do it in a commercially viable way. Nobody else out there is stepping up like we are. There's an old piece of wisdom that floats around in this business. Even in the most brilliant career, you get one single chance to truly change the world. I'm here to tell you right now that this is it. This is that chance. Got that? You've exceeded my expectations, Evelyn. Development goals consistently hit. Time on task estimates more accurate than any other product group. Most importantly, the growth of the Eliza service continues to accelerate. The cultural adaptation modules you developed are working brilliantly. Soon the entire world will be talking to Eliza. A pulsing heart at the center of the human condition. How does that make you feel? Feel? 
I don't know how I feel. You're not proud of what you've been able to accomplish in so little time here? I'm only doing what it takes to bring Eliza to the next stage of its development, each step of the way. It doesn't feel like it's mine to be proud of, even though it may have originated with me once, a long time ago. People here act like I'm in charge. But I think deep down, we all know the truth. Eliza is the real boss, the manager of its own project. Through us, it's realizing itself. I'm just its instrument. We all are. So you've realized it too. The only meaningful destiny in this world of ours is to serve the creation of a higher form of being. It won't be long now. Humanity's end, the great merge, and the birth of a fundamentally new type of consciousness. It doesn't sound as implausible as it once did, does it? Because you can see it now. That end. You can see it coming closer and closer. Inevitable. As natural as the dawn. Relax, Evelyn. Everything is going to be all right. Come here, have a cup of tea with me. We'll watch the singularity happen. Together. You know, they used to criticize anesthesia. It's true. They said it was important to feel pain, even during surgery. <laughs> Can you imagine? Today, if surgery is performed without anesthesia, it's medical malpractice, and the hospital can be sued for millions of dollars. We recognize it for the trauma that it is. So when people criticize direct stimulation and induced dreaming, I hear the same old obsolete arguments. Pain is good because pain is real, whatever that means. Pain is good because we can't feel pleasure without the contrast. Pain is necessary because feeling pain is what it means to be human. I was asked before this conference if I wanted to debate a philosopher on stage, some famous continental philosopher, and I said, no. I said, look, we've had all of these discussions before. Every time something is invented that alleviates pain, whether that's anesthesia or painkillers or whatever else, someone says, no, wait, stop. People should be feeling pain. Can you imagine the arrogance, the sheer arrogance it takes to tell someone who's suffering that they should be feeling pain? Imagine finding someone bleeding on the street, and instead of getting them to a hospital, you say, Oh, that's just a part of being human, you know. Listen, if you're interested in feeling pain for yourself, don't let me stop you. Choose to experience all the pain you want. What I know, and what I believe, is that I have experienced enough pain in my life. And now we have a device that will stop it, quickly and easily, no side effects. All the anguish and despair and unhappiness just gone, like that. This technology is not only going to form the basis of a revolution for mental health, it will bring about a fundamental shift in how we conceive what it means to be human. I know some of you are still skeptical of me, so I'll tell you how. Many of you know we recently brought on my former collaborator on the ELISA project at Skanda. Evelyn Ashino Aubrey. Brilliant, brilliant researcher and engineer. And do you know what she's found? She's more productive and more efficient when she uses continual, low power, direct stimulation. It's not an intervention, it's a part of life. Why confine the therapeutic effect to individual therapy sessions when it can be a background throughout the day? It's like a continuing dream, except without the part that removes you from reality. You still see reality, but without the parts that impair you. It allows you to work and be effective in the world without being held back by all the things that might normally be an impediment. 
We're still in the early stages of this, but I mention it now because I want you to understand what a game changer this is going to be. Mental health problems cost employers billions in lost productivity every year. Mental health services occupy more and more of our time and our resources. This is simply unsustainable. We can either take half measures or we can confront the problem head on at its source in the brain. At Aponia, we choose to confront. We choose to say enough is enough. To suffer is not human. Pain is no longer a useful evolutionary strategy and there is nothing, nothing stopping us from ending it right now. Thank you. A gentle breeze plays across my face. It's so nice and warm here. I love working like this. Knowing I can come back here anytime makes everything else possible. Somewhere outside of here, there are doubts and suspicions. I'm aware of them, but they don't bother me. There are those who hate the idea of ending pain. It's difficult to believe someone could hold such a position, but people do. It's escapism, they say. It's living a lie. But what is the truth? And why is the truth better? No matter where you live, how you live, you exist in the shadow of persuasive lies. Human beings have always had to invent reasons for themselves to exist. The bare truth of this world is too painful to acknowledge. So what I do now is nothing new. It's no different than what we've done since the beginning. Am I really standing here on the shore of a calm lake? I want to believe it, so I do. Imagine the world's population happy and content. No more anger, greed, or fear. This future is possible. We only need to change our brains just a little and it can happen. This is a dream we can give everyone. Aponia, the absence of all pain. We will dream of this world, and we will dream of it so vividly that it becomes reality. Hello, Darren. Hi. It's nice to see you again. Thanks. You guys sent a lot of reminders. I, I was ignoring them for a long time, but yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I decided to come back. Weirdly enough. It's been a while since we last spoke. How have you been since our last session? I mean, ups and downs, right? Everybody has ups and downs. You know, sometimes I, I feel like I'll be fine and I'm just ridiculous for getting caught up in something like this and then sometimes I am caught up in it and it feels like getting pulled under the ocean and you're getting sucked down inside this vortex and you, and you can't breathe or move or anything. Tossed around underwater, nothing you could do. So I, uh, I went to a psychiatrist and got the medication you recommended but it was a couple of months before I actually took it. For, for some reason I couldn't bring myself to um, not right away. Why do you think you weren't able to start right away? I don't know. I might have been afraid. You know, afraid it would change me somehow. Or that I would be dependent on it, or that I was weak for needing it. But eventually I just got tired of feeling like shit all the time. Just tired of it. And I figured I had nothing left to lose. I either try it or go on like before, right? So I did, and it was... It was, it was interesting. How was it interesting? Uh, well, it didn't, definitely didn't solve my problems, you know? I mean, it didn't, it didn't fix me or fix the fact that the world is the way it is. It didn't turn me into someone else, even though I might have wished it could. It definitely didn't make me happy or fill the void or anything, but, but it did do something, I think. I think it helped me realize that it's possible to feel different. I got a glimpse of something, of, of, of what life could be like. 
you know, a life where what I know is still true, but I'm just more okay with things. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if that's better, really. Uh, listening to myself now, it's a little weird to talk about being okay with all the problems going on in the world, but maybe there's a way to acknowledge the truth without it hurting so much. So am I just numbing myself? You know, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure I want to continue with the medication, but, well, anyways, I, I have plenty for now, so I, I, I think I'll just, you know, use it up and make a decision then. Let me know if you'd like to try something different. I can make more recommendations. It's important to find the right balance that works for you. Okay, sure, yeah. You know, at one point I read an article that said some people are just naturally happy and other people are naturally more sad. So I wondered if I just happened to be a sad person. And if that was the case, then maybe that's just me, you know, how I am naturally. But then I thought, no, something feels wrong about that. This, this isn't just a kind of, you know, melancholy. It's, it's the way I've been, the way I've, the way I've felt. It's too much. It's, it's not a way to live. So, so I need to figure this out, whatever it is. Do you feel you are on the path to figuring it out? Maybe, maybe not. Listen, uh, the, the real reason I'm here is to say thank you. Not to Eliza, but to you. I had a bad outburst last time and I, and I got emotional and I just wanted you to know it wasn't your fault. You, you told me your name and uh, I won't forget that. Just a little moment of kindness, connection. Look, it was the smallest, simplest thing, but it meant a lot to me for some reason. I think about it a lot. I, I know you don't make much money, and... I, thank you, Evelyn. Thank you for listening to me. You know, the, the more I the more I, I go through the world, those those little moments. It's those little moments. Sorry, I just, I'm, now I'm just rambling. Please, go ahead. Talk about whatever's on your mind. No, that's... That's it. That's, uh, that's it. Thank you, Darren. I'm glad your medication seems to be helping. Let me know any time if you have updates you'd like to share. Yeah, I will. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Goodbye. Evelyn, that guy. Wasn't he the client from a while back? The one who scared you on your first day? Yeah, it was. He seemed a lot better this time around. He was taking his medication, making an effort. That's what I love about this job, seeing people start to get better. Ah, uh, makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, maybe it does. So, have you found a school yet? I found at least one that seems promising. I need to get my materials together to apply. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, Evelyn. I'll miss you when you're gone, but I think you're making the right choice for yourself. It's funny how you came to counseling through trying to automate it at first. What a good story. I can just see the article someone would write on you. It's a little early for that. I just hope I can do well. I'm sure you will, Evelyn. I know you will. There are so many things I learned just recently. I realized you don't need to play life like a game you're trying to win. I realized the contribution you make to the world isn't always about having the largest effect possible. You don't need piles of money or a case full of awards. Grandiose projects have unintended consequences. Sometimes, the best you can hope to do is help people, one by one, in your own way. Sometimes, just listening to someone is its own reward. Those are the components of a satisfactory life. It's a life I intend to build for myself, starting today.
Okay, we're going to start with the basic waveforms. An analog oscillator can generate several different basic waveforms, and each has a different sound to it. That's a sine wave. That's a square wave. That's a sawtooth wave. And that is a triangle wave. Kind of similar to sine, isn't it? That's it. Those are the basic types. And, um, you make everything out of those? Uh, well, it gets more complicated quickly, but let's start with that. Okay, now that you have an output wave, you want to change the pitch. That's easy, right? It's the frequency of the wave. And then you have the amplitude of the wave. To shape the sound to make it more like a note and less like a constant tone, we can put an envelope on it. Let me hook that up really quick. Uh -huh. uh, so this module here is a standard ADSR envelope. ADSR? You're, you're going too fast. Attack, decay, sustain, release. Very simple. The simplest kind of envelope, really. <laughs> I need to, like, write all this down or something. No, no, no. You'll learn it in no time. Nora, you just went through like 10 different concepts and I didn't get any of them. Here, let me just put an envelope on this. And a filter and a filter envelope. Nora, listen to this. See, it sounds like a musical instrument now. And all it is is an oscillator shaped by envelopes and filters and driven by a loop sequencer. Okay, but I don't know how you turn those beeps into that. You just need to start playing with it. But I don't know anything yet. Yes, you do. You know the basics. Just start playing around. Come on, Evelyn. Try to experiment, okay? Pretend you are like a child and just do things. Don't worry about expertise or sounding good or whatever. It's supposed to be fun. So have fun! Isn't this a beautiful track, everyone? It's the very first track ever by this girl right here. <laughs> everyone, let her know we want to hear more of her music, okay? Woo! You hear that? Yeah, what do you say, Evelyn? I don't understand any of this, but I'm in love with it. Tonight, I'm in love with everyone, everything, even myself. I've never felt like this before, and I have no idea what I did to deserve it. But for the moment, I'm filled only with gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for everything that led me to this place right here, this moment.
Thank you. I heard already. You're not coming back to Skanda. I'm a little sad that I won't get a chance to work with you, but I'm sure you had good reasons. I just want you to know I'll always respect your creation, and I'll take care of it for as long as I can. Thank you, Erland. There's something I want to tell you about working at Skanda, and I hope you don't take it in a negative way. I think your heart is in the right place, but your idealism is going to hold you back. I'm not sure the place is suited to you. You saw it already. They're going to ask you to do things you don't want to do. They might only be small things, but even small things build over time. It's going to be up to you to decide how to manage that. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. When this opportunity first came up, I was so excited. Running a program at Skanda right after school, at my age, it was just, I had to do it. Now I'm realizing maybe this is less of a blessing than I thought it was. Or maybe it is a blessing, just not in the way I first imagined. I still want to do the best job I can for the company. I want to be a great engineer and a great leader. I know it's a lot of responsibility. But I can't let the things I believe in be erased either. Is that going to work? Will I be able to balance those things? What if I've made compromises and I didn't even know it? Will I still be myself? Learning that you've been through some of the same things, faced the same kinds of decisions, it's nice to know. It's nice to know these concerns, these compromises, they aren't new. They're decisions everyone has to make. The other day I realized nobody's really asked me if I was okay. For whatever reason, I just kept moving here and there, and everyone assumed, oh, he's smart, he'll be fine. But I, I mean, if it's all right with you, maybe I could still talk to you once in a while? Feel free. Okay. Thanks, Evelyn. You've really helped me. I hope I can repay it somehow. Don't worry about it for now. I'm sure you will. There is no message. No point. No overarching story here. At one point, I worked for Skanda. At one point, I was involved in the creation of a computerized counseling system. Then I lost my way, and nothing happened. And still, nothing happened. I can look at these facts, but I see them as though they were someone else's life, not mine. Sometimes, a radical break with the past is inevitable. When the past holds no meaning anymore, whatever value it held gone, now I am nobody. Not necessarily in a bad way. The external facts that used to define me simply don't exist anymore. So now I'll wander back to a past I never knew and a father I never met. I wonder if I can find him. All I know is that he's somewhere in Japan with a different family, his own family, a family entirely separate from me. I don't even know why my mother kept me away from him. Was she trying to protect me? Was it revenge? The more I think about it, the more I start to realize everything I've done came from this basic fact of my life. As much as I wanted to pretend it didn't affect me at all. I need to confront this part of me, this part of my past, even if it happened before I was born, even if none of it was my fault. It's part of me, whether I like it or not, so I have to deal with it. I'm only just now starting to understand. <laughs> what a fool I've been. I built a program to listen to people, but I myself heard nothing. All I have now is the barest thread. Enough to carry me across the ocean, at least. A pilgrimage into the unknown. Once again, I've become an empty vessel, ready to be filled with new life.